Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. If you like to build or repair guitars, I suggest you click that subscribe button down below, and you'll become part of a community of fellow luthiers, and together, we can take your skills to a whole new level. If you'd like to support my guitar building YouTube channel, visit eGuitarPlans.com and buy a plan. A link is in the description below. Now on with the video. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the Highline CNC pickup coil winding machine. It's all finished and the software is pretty much finished. So I can write G-code and actually wind some pickups with this machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind a humbucker bobbin and I'm also going to wind a single coil. So what I'll do is I'll demonstrate how this machine works using the G code that my software program is creating. So let's jump in and wind a humbucker bobbin to start and then I'll do a single coil. The first thing I'm going to do is attach the bobbin to the bobbin winder plate using some double-sided sticky tape. Next, I have to make sure that my wire guide on the traversing mechanism is aligned properly with the bobbin so that it's in the start position. And to do that, I use a straight edge placed against the bottom flange, and then I'll turn the lead screw of the traversing mechanism in order to get the center of that wire guide aligned with the edge of the ruler. Next, I'll place a coil of 43 gauge wire down below my winder, and I'll feed the wire up through the nylon eyelet that I have in the front of the winder's base. Next, I place the wire down into the tensioner, and then I will feed the wire into the groove that's cut in the nylon wire guide. The wire is then wound around the bobbin itself and taped to the front of the bobbin plate. And I try to make sure that I've got enough wire here so that later on when I solder my leads on, I have enough wire at both the start and the finish of the coil. Now I'm ready to program the counter. And since I'm going to put 5,225 turns of wire on this coil, that's the number that I'm going to program into the counter. To send the G-code file to the winder's controller, I'm going to use a program called Universal G-Code Sender on my laptop. So I'll open that program and then connect to the gerbil on the Arduino. Next, I'll click the File tab and navigate out to find my G-Code file that I've saved on the, the laptop. Once I've done that, all I have to do is hit Send, and the winding operation begins. It'll take about four minutes to wind this bobbin, and rather than make you sit through the whole four minutes, we'll come back as it's nearing completion. The G-code file that I wrote for this winding operation is actually a little bit longer than it needs to be, and that's so that the traverse doesn't stop before the winder stops. As you'll see here at 5,225 turns, the bobbin will stop spinning, but the traverse continues. To stop the traverse after the winding operation has completed, I'll jump back into Universal G-Code Center and cancel the transfer of the G-Code. Then I'll click the Machine Control tab and hit a soft reset to clear out the remaining G-Code. And finally, I'll remove the bobbin from the winder and I'll solder on a pair of leads. Then I can test the resistance of the coil. And if you'll recall, I was targeting 5,000 ohms of resistance. And as you can see, I got a perfect 5,000 ohms out of this coil. Now here's some bonus video that I shot while I was winding a single coil pickup. Pay close attention to the traverse and notice how it speeds up and slows down at random intervals. That's how I achieve a scatter wound pattern. Now, 
When the program turn count is reached and the bobbin comes to a complete stop, you'll notice that the traverse continues to move side to side. And that will continue until I go into Universal G Code Center and hit cancel. Then the traverse will come to a complete stop. Now one additional modification I made to this machine is the addition of a, this is called a tailpiece for a mini lathe. And what it does is it simply holds the bobbin to the bobbin plate so I don't have to use double-sided sticky tape. Okay, so now the big question is, what's next for this machine? Well, what I need to do is put together an assembly manual. And that's going to consist of a, it's a fully illustrated step-by-step -step guide for putting this winder together. And it's going to include a uh, cut sheet for all the parts that you need to cut and drill. It's also going to include a parts and materials list for all the components that went into making this winder. And it's not going to include a source list. Uh, those days are long gone. It used to be you could include links to the sources where you purchased all the components, but it just doesn't work that way anymore. And unfortunately, a lot of the sellers are here today and then gone tomorrow. And to make matters worse, what I can purchase where I live isn't necessarily what you can purchase where you live. However, the list of parts and materials will be prepared in such a way that you can copy the descriptions and then search for those using your browser. So that's really about the best way to do it. And uh, it's also going to include links for the software that I used. And what I'm planning to do is I'm going to offer the software uh, two different versions. One that you can use if you're using an imperial measurement system and the other you can use if you're using the metric measurement system. So inches or millimeters, whichever one you want to use. Uh, rather than combining those two into one program, it'll be two separate programs. And I think looking towards the future down the road, I'm also considering some uh, feature enhancements for the software. And I don't think it'll mean any sort of a change as far as the machine is concerned. That's going to stay pretty much the same. The only thing that might change is it's possible I might replace the counter. Not because there's anything wrong with this counter, it's because I want to see if a, I might be able to do a counter that's built into the software so you wouldn't need to use this. Um, but I still have to think that through because I'm not sure if I actually want to do that. I kind of like having the counter separate from the software, but we'll see. Uh, the other thing is I've got some ideas for the software where you could actually manipulate some sliders. And what that would do is it would replace the targeted resistance. So the, there'd be a slider for treble, uh, one for mid-range, and one for bass. And there would also be one, I think, for output, but I'm not really sure yet. And there would also be possibly some radio buttons where you could select from different types of magnets, or maybe it'd be a drop-down, I don't know. At any rate, you could choose the type of magnet you're going to use in the pickup, and then you could input the level of gauss for that magnet, either uh, based on what you've measured from the magnet or what you intend to charge and or degauss the magnet to uh, when you assemble the pickup. But once you've input all that information into the software, it's going to tell you what gauge of wire you should use and uh, possibly the type of insulation that you would want on that wire and then how many turns. So ultimately, the goal would be to create a software program that would allow even a nine-year-old the ability to wind an amazing sounding pickup without having any kind of experience whatsoever. So I have some ideas about how this can work. 
It's going to take a lot of math. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And this may take a while to do, but um, I'm really enjoying writing code for software. So uh, I'll probably dive into that and continue working on it at least for the next six to eight months. We'll see. So at any rate, that's kind of where things stand at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that a manual uh, with software links will be ready to purchase on my eGuitar Plan site probably late this spring or sometime early this summer, maybe middle of summer. I'm going to try to get it done before then, but it just those illustrated manuals take a while to put together. At any rate, I hope that this video is entertaining, inspiring, educational, thought-provoking, controversial, all that good stuff. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't subscribe to my channel but like videos on building guitars and pickup winders and CNC technology and all that good fun stuff, click the subscribe button, uh, hit the bell for notifications. And then if you'd like to help support this channel and this sort of work that I do, head over to eGuitarPlans.com, purchase a plan. Even if you're not going to build a guitar, it really helps uh, to keep this channel going. So uh, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>